sticking, clicking, but not shifting. If your Chrome makes sounds like that, this video is for you. Uh, we're going to take a look at JRX unit. Uh, it was sent to me a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it makes a whizzing noise, but doesn't move the cage. Uh, so we're going to take a look what's inside and see if we can fix it. In the second part of the video, I'm going to show you how to repair broken link so you can keep using your front Mac without the need for purchasing a brand new one. Today, we are fixing front Macs. Welcome to the i2GP YouTube channel. In the first part, we're going to take apart servo of a JRX uh, front Mac. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, what's wrong with it uh, from the outside and potentially this is what caused the issue in the first place. So uh, if we take that off, obviously I already helped myself. So uh, that can go, everything is, is moving nice and smooth here, so no issues whatsoever, obviously I'm going to clean it later. But uh, if you pay attention to that bit here, that's very rusted and obviously as you can see that doesn't move. So I'm going to do it only once uh, because I don't want to cause any more damage. So if I try to shift, this is what happens, so uh, the unit doesn't shift. So. Uh, uh, I'm going to first uh, pry this open, so the best way to do it is to go slowly with a wire snippers because obviously that's properly seized and you don't want to damage, damage it even more. And I tried soaking it in a WD-40, but it didn't seem to do much, much difference. So as you can see, that's properly seized. And uh, if I cannot take it off with my wire cutters, there was no way that would move. And because obviously there's, that's uh, attached to that bit here. There was no movement so what happens literally there i bet if we're lucky uh, the pin which holds the gear inside uh, was damaged uh, and obviously that's just fell out uh, if we're unlucky obviously the gear has been completely stripped if it's small one uh, you have to have a space to repair it if it's big one then we can rotate it by 180 degrees but uh, let me take it off and then i'll give you an update uh, on the next steps so after some wrestling i managed to take it off uh, as you can see, obviously, there's a quite significant rust buildup, and same on this side. So I'm going to take a sandpaper, enlarge this uh, opening, so obviously, so that's going to operate nice and, and smooth and loose. Uh, now, uh, we need to take it open. Similar to Rare Mac, you need to follow the seam, but uh, the one thing you need to pay attention to that corner, so uh, you can be fairly comfortable going around here all the way, but when you're looking on, obviously, I would say that's a two o'clock, looking down on it, uh, in this area we got a PCB, and I've learned the hard way, that's the first Mac I've ever opened, and there was a little a capacitor, SMD capacitor, and I managed to uh, touch it with my uh, knife, so, uh, uh, but yeah, uh, so I'm gonna take it open, and obviously go careful, uh, make sure you wear gloves, because obviously you're operating with knife, and just follow that seam around, and then you can uh, get it open. So I've managed to cut it open, without the damaging a uh, component on PCB and we might be lucky so as you can see I'm gonna take it off anyway but that pin here uh, slide out and that's supposed to be all the way in so what it might allow to do is obviously that is quite loose and and as you can see if I spin it obviously that so let's try it again See? Let me zoom in. Pay attention to that pin. So because that pin slides out like that, that gear is coming loose. So 
So if those teeth aren't damaged, they are a little bit, but not much, then uh, possibly we can we can fix it. So uh, what I do, obviously I'm gonna clean it nicely and uh, we're going to improve on a brilliant design of Shimano and we're going to melt a little bit of plastic on top of here. So obviously that's going to prevent that going uh, further anymore. And also I'm going to fill that gap because as you can see, I can put that much in here. That's obviously touching that uh, case down the bottom, but obviously there's a little bit of flexibility. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to melt a little bit of plastic on the top of here. So when that's put together, there will be no movement. Obviously that pin wouldn't come out anymore. And obviously that's assuming uh, I, uh, I'm going to, I will, but uh, whoever's going to use it uh, again, uh, making sure obviously that is always maintained. Because like I said, the biggest problem with a front max on a any Shimano apart from Ultegra and Durace 12 speed uh, is a lack of maintenance, uh, which is obviously is not 100% fault of users because uh, Shimano is being advertised as a yeah, feed and forget. But obviously, if you keep on top of this, uh, that should be absolutely fine. Uh, alternatively, if you manage to find a broken Durace, I think the linkage in Durace is not plated. It's a, either a titanium or some other type of material because obviously it doesn't look like it's a, a chrome plated. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot just flip it over. So obviously, you can have a, a rusty one down the bottom. So that is a one way fit. But if you enlarge it and put some uh, uh, grease in it, uh, that should be absolutely fine. Unless obviously you've got access to a plating facility. But uh, yeah, uh, let me just clean it up and then I'm gonna give you an update on the next step. So as you can see, uh, some of the teeth are damaged, but just uh, halfway through. Let me just flip it over. Shaky hands. But I think that's going to work because obviously they're not completely stripped so again a broken shifter came uh, very handy i took some plastic or polymer out of that uh, i've melted on the top uh, so as to be in line with with that bit and obviously that's going to prevent that pin from uh, uh, coming out again uh, the next step obviously is to clean everything nicely and then uh, seal it uh, the one thing you need to bear in mind is you need to cut cut around here, obviously remove that bit of plastic when you're sealing it, because obviously when you seal that around, uh, you need to obviously melt it around these edges and otherwise you wouldn't have access. So if you cut that uh, off and then obviously you can melt it out on top of it, but obviously make sure uh, you clean any, any debris first before you move uh, uh, with uh, uh, sealing it. So I'm going to clean it, put some grease in it, uh, seal it, and then we're gonna test it. So I have sealed uh, the unit, as you can see. Uh, all the way around. Uh, as I've mentioned before, obviously I had to cut that off uh, because that's just a spacer which goes like that. But obviously it's not necessary, but it's necessary to get around this edge, otherwise the water is going to get in. Uh, you need to pay attention, uh, these are uh, one, two and three slots. So you cannot cover them or melt plastic over those because <clears throat> otherwise uh, the cover won't sit. The next bit is to put some grease into that guide and also on that uh, shaft and one here. So that just stays, slides on and clips into place. Just like that. So that's going to keep that axle in line. Then we're sliding that on again with a, just a little bit of grease. Remove excess. Circle clip goes on the top. Again, a little bit of grease on this pivot here. Just like that. So as you can see, that's in that position. Then don't forget about that bit here. That just sit nicely here. Another circ clip down the bottom. Cover goes on, sits nice and tight. Phillips here. Again, a little bit of grease 
inside here just put it from this side and a little bit over the end because <clears throat> that axle is going to push that in anyway and the only thing to do is to test it So it works. It's a bit louder because obviously the teeth are slightly damaged, but it, it works. Uh, I'm going to test it on the bike and see how that performs. And then, uh, yeah, that's everything in this uh, part. In the second part, I'm going to fix that linkage, uh, so uh, I, uh, keep watching. In this section, we are fixing broken uh, linkage. So as you can see, this is Jarex, uh, but the same process applies to uh, 8050 and 9150 uh, Jarex. And uh, obviously we got plastic or uh, glass fiber reinforced plastic uh, linkage in the uh, 105, 12 speed. Uh, but uh, yeah, usually I found them uh, broken either Jarex 8050 or 9150. So that's a 1.5 millimeter or in 8050 that's a two millimeter. So you can just uh, take it off. That's going to make things easier to work on. Obviously, you need to keep hold of that. Uh, it's a good time to uh, service your uh, linkage. So again, that's your Philips. So you need to make sure, obviously, that is nicely clean and same as uh, this section here. Uh, so again, uh, you need to just shift down and that's going to expose that linkage. Take off the clip and then clean it nicely so it's uh, nice and dry and free of dust. So what we're going to do, uh, you can work in that position or you can uh, clamp it uh, to vise or something. Uh, you need to make sure obviously that's uh, dead in the center, like that. And what I'm using obviously, uh, if you strand at the middle of the road, a uh, good thing is to use just a cable tie. So I'm going to demonstrate in this way. Obviously you don't have to uh, remove everything if you're on the side, roadside, but uh, it's very likely you can find cable ties in hardware stores, sometimes even supermarket. And if you clamp it like that, that's going to take you home without any issues, because obviously that's not going to obstruct. Make sure obviously that clip is all the way down and then that's going to take you home. So uh, if you roadside uh, uh, and you don't have a front shifting and you got say, some climbing to get home uh, that's definitely a way to go i've heard stories that uh, actually uh, that zip tie hack uh, was used for uh, months even years so but uh, today we're going to fix uh, that in a more permanent way so i can take that off i use uh, old uh, brake cable uh, definitely has to be stainless steel just to prevent any potential rust uh, I use two strands which are already unwinded and then which is going to wrap them around uh, which is going to act like a clamping force and uh, it's much better than using cable tie because uh, this can be nicely hidden when we're done with that so first of all you need to start by wrapping them and again it's not very important where you're gonna start as long as you make a start just make sure you obviously you don't over tighten it because obviously you can snap it but uh, because you got plenty of this so you can have as many items as you want just you need to be confident that uh, you're happy with uh, how it looks And then cut off remaining bit. 
So this is how it looks like. So I'm using a, just a old body from a, a 8070 shifter. As you can see, that was a damage and accident, but obviously it's a good source of a, a same a polymer as used here. Uh, when working with a hot plastic and obviously with that melting, uh, I'm using a proper protection. So make sure obviously when you do, you wear a respiratory uh, kit so it doesn't hurt your lungs, anything like that. Uh, I'm going to give you an update uh, when that's uh, done and then I'm going to take you through next steps. So this is how it looks like after I've melted the plastic on top of it. Uh, you need to be very patient and make sure that the plastic is melted nicely in between uh, wire strands. So there's a good uh, compaction. And obviously now what you can do if you have a Dremel, I'm going to uh, finish it off with Dremel and make it nice and smooth. If not, you can use a sandpaper and block uh, just to make sure obviously that is uh, nicely it goes inside obviously it's it's not bad now but obviously i'm gonna make it nice and smooth with, with dremel and then uh, depending uh jrx is a matte black so possibly you can leave it as is but for jurace and ultegra you can paint it with a gray paint obviously to match it but uh, i'm gonna take it now dremel and then polish it off i'm going to use a three polishing uh bits so that's a 120 a 220 and then just a bit of a, a sanding stone uh, to get into small bits and pieces. But you need to be careful, obviously don't go too much uh, because if you take off too much of plastic then you can hit the wire strands and then obviously the whole point of uh, wrapping them around them tightly it's going to be defeated. Make sure that goes nice and smooth through the opening. So now we can test it. So as I can see, there's a plenty of space, but we can take a little bit off here. Yep, so as you can see, uh, that's a little bulge, this is what I made a knot. Uh, ideally what you can do, obviously, if you can manage to get a knot either underneath or at the back, that's going to be much easier, much better. But, uh, as you can see... <clears throat> there is a... still there is a space. So it's not touching. So I'm gonna just touch it up with a just because obviously you got the, the silvery bit. I'm gonna touch it up with a, a matte black paint, and uh, that's ready to go. Uh, it's not pretty, but again, it's uh, not going to be visible anyway. And the only challenge using Dremel is obviously it melts plastics a little bit, so uh, you can finish it up with a, a wet sandpaper, and uh, that's going to give you more smoother finish. And then. Get out. Yeah, and I'm pretty confident that's going to last longer than the uh, plastic one. And that's the final look. So that's uh, just a sprayed with black paint. Yeah, so I'm gonna let it dry and that's gonna be put together. And uh, Hopefully, it's going to last uh, much longer than the original one. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, uh, do let me know in the comments. Uh, if you enjoy the content, please uh, like and subscribe. Uh, that helps uh, to grow this channel and we can spread the news and hopefully we can uh, bring back to life more DI2 components. Take care and until next time.